the common modalités de gouvernance Well, the commons is an interesting aspect because they are talking about commonly protecting an environment or commonly protecting an area. However, uh, what we feel from the Rise of Nature movement is that when you talk about the commons, you need to be really careful that you're not talking about an object that is commonly owned. You know, that's a big distinction that you have to make. Because if you're only talking about doing the same thing that you're doing by an, as an individual, but then uh, noticing that it's something that uh, most people want and are interested, and it's commonly owned, then you're still in the logic that nature is an object, that nature is something that is a slave, that nature can be owned. And, and not only own, but only but use uh, as uh, we commonly decide. So I think that from the right-based right perspective, uh, we can use the commons and we can use the idea of like, commonly protecting something if we recognize that it's not something that we own, but that we are part of it, that we are part of nature, and recognizing the right of that ecosystem, the right of nature to exist, and of course of uh, human beings to use it, and to not to own it, but to use it, to take care of it, to protect it commonly. If we can make that shift of the commons, instead of saying that, uh, that something is commonly owned, but something is only is commonly protected and we are part of that common, that we are part of that commons, then is when the rights perspective is in, in, in introduced in the, in the language of the commons. Well, I think the next steps, well, there, there are many, many, many next steps. Some steps in the United Nations, you know, which is going really slow. Some steps with social movements. But I think that in the issue of the commons is that we need to realize that that's something that some social movements have been pushing forward. And it's a time to unite. We cannot do this by ourselves. We cannot do this separated. And the, the nice thing about rights of nature is that if you think about it, what brings us back together, you know, we can be really different, we're from different nationalities, we can think different, but what brings us back together is Mother Earth, you know, the planet is bringing us together. So if we are able to recognize that, recognize that recognizing rights of nature is something that can change a paradigm, then we can definitely work together on that. And when we think about the commons, and we, if we think about that we are in a common place, that we're home and we're in one whole planet, then that idea can change. The next steps, working together with social movements, recognize that there's something intrinsic that, that brings us together. And that's actually this, this change of paradigm, the change of the relationship with, with Mother Earth, with nature. Well, what we do with the Global Alliance for the Rights of Nature is trying to, to make other social movements understand that, of course, what brings us together is Mother Earth. So if you, we use rights of nature as a tool that can uni unify everybody, because if you're talking about women issues, or if you're talking about gender, if you're talking about agriculture, we're all drawn back to the earth and the relationship with the earth that is the wrong part, is what's, what we've miss, been missing up. That's why we have a global crisis, not only economic crisis, but an environmental crisis, social crisis. If we realize that, then we can make a change. So my organization is trying to uh, acknowledge rights of nature, acknowledge the importance of rights of nature, and make sure people understand it, so that can be a reuniting force for social movements. And of course, hopefully, for governments to put this forward. But I, that's not going to happen if people are not united upon that.